Hi, this is Scott Forsyth on week 9 of the Web Pro series on various tools, tricks, and topics meant for the web administrator. Last week I gave an intro of URL rewrite for IIS, which I believe is a powerful and useful tool that any web administrator should become familiar with. Today I want to take this further, and let's take a look at the server variables, the parts that make up a URL, and then I want to cover a real-world situation of redirecting HTTP to HTTPS, and we'll just target it specifically to the login page, so we'll touch base on some conditions. I'm making the assumption that you've seen last week's video or that you have a general understanding of URL rewrite. But if you don't, I encourage you to take a look at last week's video first because it's a foundation for today's topic. So let's dive right in. The first topic I want to cover is the server variables. When IIS, or any web server for that matter, receives a request from a visitor, there's a lot of useful information available to it. These are presented to IIS and any platform or web server language on the server to do with what they want. So that information comes in IS, rewrite, URL rewrite, or ASP.NET, PHP, any of these platforms can take that information and do what they want with it. For example, server variables that are useful to us are the user's IP address, the URL and parts of the query string, the browser agent, which is the operating system which browser they came in, and also shows whether it's a mobile device. If a request is HTTP, or HTTPS, and even the certificate details are available to us. So the power of URL rewrite is that we can use any of these variables to watch for a certain type of request, and then we can redirect, we can rewrite, we can handle it accordingly. First off, we need a way to see the server variables for ourselves and to really understand them better. So here's what I like to do. I've actually recorded this already in my blog, so if you go to weblogs.asp.net slash OWScott, and let's search for the word server variables. One word, no space. Click the search button. And we're going to say view all server variables for the site. We want this article. And I just copy and paste this. It's very, very simple. In fact, let me show you briefly what it does. For each, we're going to call each variable of var in request.server variables. And we're going to response.write, which is output to the screen, and the name of the variable, and then the value of the variable, and then a line break. And that's all it does. It just loops through that. So we're going to do this for example, .orgsweb.com. Let's create a new page called vars.aspx. This is very useful to be able to do this yourself and understand it. So, okay, we have this here. Let's save that. Now, if we go and visit the site, example.orgsweb.com slash vars.aspx, now you can see that there's a whole list. You can ignore these top couple. It's just everything bundled together. In fact, let's come in at HTTPS colon slash slash gives us a little bit more useful information. Notice the certificate information is available here as well. And so briefly, some information that's very useful here. Uh, again, I mentioned the server. The certificate itself has a lot of information. We have the path info, the local address. This is really helpful. This is equivalent to the HTTP bindings I covered a few weeks ago. And this is the IP address of the server. And I use this for, especially when I get into ARR for load balancing, we can use the IP address that it's bound to is here with the local address. The remote address, of course, I'm testing on the local machine, but this is the client's IP, and it's usually going to be a public IP. You can see, is it a get, a post, a head, you know, what, what's the request method? We see the script name and the port that it comes in as. And I mentioned I did have HTTPS, which is on or off. We can see the cookie information is available to us here. And then another real important one is our HTTP host, which is, in this case, it's example.orgsweb.com. So these give us various parts of the server variables. So let's create a couple real quick rules to get an idea of feel for this ourselves. So we're going to add a blank rule and just say example. Let's do something where, well, the pattern, let's do everything in the URL. And let's do remote host equals. And we want to, let's say, a particular person we're going to allow to view the site, everyone else we want to block. So let's try this. And I do 127001. So we're going to allow for myself to be true. Let's start with our hat and with the dollar sign and escape our special characters, which are dots. So a slash dot really means a dot. Okay, so if it comes from me, then let's do something. In fact, let's do it a little bit different. Let's say if it doesn't match the pattern, 
and we can do a redirect. Let's give Google.com our traffic and let's make it a temporary redirect so our browser doesn't cache it. Now, if we go and visit this, so we want to go to example bars.com. Notice it doesn't redirect because we're coming from the local machine. But if I try it from another browser on my own computer, hitting by IP, notice that I hit it and it did the redirect to google.com. So you can see that we have full control of those server variables to do with what we want. Now let's take this further. Let's look at the parts of the URL. And again, let's go to my blog and if we search for the word parts, or you can go to the URL cloud tag here. And so URL parts available to URL rewrite. And I use Bing.com as an example, which I'll do here shortly as well. And you can see the different parts here. So let's go to Bing.com and let's go to how about vacation spots. Stops? Okay, sure. We'll do vacation stops. So we can see here at the top the different parts of this U the URL. And so what we want to do is understand which ones to use. So if we have inside here, this is HTTP host. Again, let's go back here. Let's break these into the two parts of the screen. So notice here we have the www.bing.com. This corresponds to our HTTP host. We have the search in this case, and let's say it was actually search.default.aspx if it was that. And now this is important to notice. Notice it doesn't start with the slash. And I note this here in the search. And this is the URL pattern in the rule. Let's take a quick look at this again. Notice this pattern here that they give us. That one there is a search default.aspx without the beginning slash. But if you use the server variable path info or the server variable called URL, those do start with a slash. And that got me hung up there the first few times when I used URL rewrite. Then the query string is all of this after the question mark. All of that is our query string, which is query underscore string. There's a variable available to URL rewrite, but it's not listed in the server variables, called request URI. The server port is usually 80 or 443. In this case, it's but if we add it here, and actually it redirected away from us so we don't get to see it here on Bing site. But that's our server port. And the other real useful one is HTTP or HTTPS. And you can see right now we're coming in as HTTP. But if we came in as HTTPS, we see that available in a server variable called HTTPS. So these make up the parts of the URL if we want to do any redirecting based on that URL. So let's do a real world example and let's redirect example.orgsweb.com and I put up a real, real simple login.aspx page and we'll call it just as login here. I told you it's simple. And what I want to do is if we come in as HTTP, which we are right now, we want to automatically redirect. But we only want to do it for one domain name, example.com. Well, let's assume that we had multiple domain names so we can see an example of different conditions. And we only want to do it for a login page. We don't want to do it for the entire site. So here's how we would do it. So we're going to go into example.com. URL rewrite. Let's delete this rule so it doesn't clash with us. It wouldn't actually in this case. We'll start with a blank rule. And let's just say HTTP to HTTPS redirect. We're going to do this for, in fact, here's an opportunity to use our URL. And we're going to make this login.aspx. To be literal here, we're going to end with a dollar sign. And our dot should really be escaped to a slash dot. Now, we can start this with the hat to make it exactly login.aspx, or we can leave it like this. And if there's any login pages in subfolders, they're also going to work because we're not specifying what it begins with. Okay, so we're going to add a condition. To, and let's do a condition for HTTP host. Example, .com. to be literal again, let's escape this. And I'm expecting next week to cover regex, and it's actually not as complex as you would first think. So we'll be able to cover what these various parts of this mean. Now, I've made a mistake here, uh, kind of on purpose, but I want to give an example on what is going to happen if we leave something out that's really important. So keep watching. This is not a complete rule quite yet. So what we want to do now is let's redirect and we need to redirect to HTTPS colon slash slash example.orgsweb.com slash now. Here's what we can do. 
is we could manually, if we wanted to, type in login.aspx. But let's use what's called a back reference. Instead, let's use whatever the person typed in here. That way, if they came into slash folder slash login.aspx, we're going to maintain that folder in the redirect. And so the reference is done here with the open curly bracket, and R refers to that rule, colon, zero refers to the in entire part of the rule. And we'll cover back references in more detail, I believe, next week. Okay, so now we have this redirect. And let's try it out. So we're going to go to our login page and refresh. Oh, look at this. We do have a mistake. The web page has a redirect loop. And the problem is because the rule works for every type of page, HTTP or HTTPS, and so it's going to keep running over and over and over again. So to avoid this loop, let's add HTTPS here, and we're going to say if HTTPS is off, we're going to run the rule. So if the rule, after it's applied, we don't want it to keep running forever. And so we're going to apply this, and we're going to run again, refresh, perfect. So let's try again. So we have HTTP, enter, notice it immediately redirects to HTTPS, and it's only going to work for See, it doesn't work for the home page, but it will if we go again to login.aspx. So it's specific to just that page, just that domain, and it does not do an endless loop. Well, I hope you found this useful. Uh, please do let me know. I'd love to have comments and hear from people that are watching this and finding this useful. And I hope you continue to tune in next week. Hope you have a great week. Thanks.